do uh, apologize if I seem a bit discombobulated this morning, trying to do the job of uh, three. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know, you know, with God's help, it, it, it is definitely possible. All it right. is definitely possible. So um, I stand here before you today to get a chance to teach one more time or lead All the right. discussion one more time right. um, in this unit. And uh, before I even get into what the title of the unit is, I do want to let you know, I've talked to a few people this morning who've come in the sanctuary. I've uh, invited them, told them I need your help, brought me up this morning. All right. um, what's most important is that God's words go forth. His teaching is correct and it's accurate. And uh, it is my prayer and uh, the will of the Sunday school that somebody hears something that will help strengthen their walk with the Lord All right. and help them become more knowledgeable about um, the prophet of Jeremiah, who we'll be discussing this morning, and King Zedekiah. And, um, and, and it, you know, it's not about me. Um, it doesn't matter who's teaching the Sunday school. It's the, what matters is the word, that the word is going forth. So I've invited some people to help me out. I want to invite you all to on Zoom to um, jump in and help me out. And uh, let's make this discussion be what the Lord would have it to be. Right. Let's, have, let's let it to be engaging. I noticed that um, last Sunday, the Sunday school was so engaging when we was talking about uh, the man, the title just escaped me. Uh, empty worship, or let's see, empty rituals are useless. And uh, man, what a discussion we had last Sunday. What a discussion we had. So I do want to invite you all. Zoom, we do have a chat. Um, I did turn the speaker on. If I don't see your chat quick enough and you need to just get it out there, I will hear the speaker if you just need to unmute yourself. And uh, let's carry on in this. So I'll start in unit three, Courageous Prophets of Change, Courageous Prophet of Change. And I have enjoyed this study. Um, I have enjoyed it. Um, and it takes courage to be a prophet because you have to speak sometimes for things that are not popular or not even politically correct. As long as it's biblically correct, then you, you're doing the right thing. And, uh, and in this lesson here, it made me often wonder. I saw myself a lot as the King Zedekiah. Before we get the whipping on him, too bad. Uh, there's a lot of things he's done that I've done too. All right. A lot of things he's done that I see in myself. And uh, needs correct. Right. Needs correct. So let, before we get the whipping on him, just think about it. Now, he sought out advice, you know. You know, when people ask for advice, do you often wonder, do they really want to hear the truth? All right. Or do they really just want a yes man, you know? And, um, and uh, if we're in a position to where we're the one giving the advice, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Because if we're only telling them, speaking from what our lander thinks, then they know better off than before they even ask them. Right. We got to make sure that advice is coming from the correct source. Right. If we give an advice, it needs to be godly advice. Right. That's, right. That's right. If we consider ourselves Christians, we're godlike, then our advice should be godlike as well. Right. So let's be careful of that advice that we speak because we have the ability to speak life into a situation. Right. So let's use God's words to do that. That's the only source of true life. And um, in this lesson, um, Consequences for, oh, I'm sorry, the consequences of giving challenging advice. The consequences of giving challenging <laughs> advice. And um, Jeremiah had faced some consequences prior to this. Mm -hmm. he, he faced some consequences in giving challenging advice. Mm -hmm. But um, the thing that, um, that kind of tickled me about this lesson as it first started is, um, like I said, I see myself in it. Um, this lesson picks up where um, King Zedekiah has sent for Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. He has sent for him. And uh, it wasn't the first time they had that conversation. You know? uh -huh. The first time he had it, he threw him in jail. They yeah. tried to kill him the second time. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Then here we go again, the same conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, as parents, have you ever felt like, how many times do I have to keep telling you? Yeah. I have told you and I have told you. As a teacher, I feel that way. You know, I teach algebra. And I keep telling them, you know, whatever you do to one side of the equal side, you got to do it to the other side. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them that during the lesson. I tell them that during the guided practice. I tell them that. And then I tell them that during the independent practice. Then we finally get to the test. Come time to grade it, and there we go again. I guess I didn't tell them enough. Mm -hmm. And they're still doing it on one side, not the other side. All right. But um, Jeremiah was faced with that challenge of um, 
having to te tell the same message mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it, it's funny how um, he kept saying the exact same thing. That lets you know that that message was truly from right. God. You know? right. Right. If you right. look at um, 1 and 9, uh, Jeremiah 1 and 9, it talks about how God touched his mouth and put his words in him. And that's what a true prophet does. They only speak the words that God has placed in their mouth. Right. They can't say anything other than that. They can't add to it. And they can't take away from it. Right. They had to speak those words. And that's why the message was the same. God's message doesn't change. It didn't change each of those three occurrences and it still have not changed today. Right. The message is still the same. Right. The message is still the same. And uh, this is talking about consequences of giving and challenging advice. But there are also consequences. Now, I'm going to get into the lesson after this, but I want to bring this point out. There's also consequences to not following godly advice. Those consequences. You'll see that um, uh, King Zedekiah had to face some consequences. Mm -hmm. He had to face some consequences that he couldn't escape. You know, he tried to talk his way out of it, right. but there was no escape for him. There was consequences for not taking godly advice. Mm -hmm. And it's the same is true today. There are consequences for us not taking godly advice. Mm -hmm. Amen. There are consequences to it. All right, so let, let's get into the lesson. We're on unit three. We're dealing, dealing with courageous prophets of change. The title of this week's lesson, The Consequences of Giving Challenging Advice. All right, the devotional reading comes from uh, Jeremiah 38th chapter, verses 7 through 13, and the 39th chapter, verses 15 through 18. Then the background scriptures, the entire chapter, Jeremiah 37 and 38, which leads us into our printed passage for today is Jeremiah 38, then it's uh, verses 14 through 23. All right. 14 through 23. And I'm going to go over the key verse. The key verse, Jeremiah said unto Zedekiah, if I declare unto thee, wilt thou not surely put me to death? And if I give thee counsel, will thou not hearken unto me? It's the uh, key verse today. And that verse speaks volumes. It speaks volumes. Um, it definitely speaks volumes. Uh, before I just get into the lesson, let's talk about the uh, background, just a little bit of background, just a little bit. To, um, to this, right, I chose this as the background because it kind of helps me to understand why Jeremiah said that in a key verse. Why, why was he so reluctant to tell? Why he had to ask these questions before he, he did, before he spoke that message to him, before he gave him God's message? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, keep in mind, this is the third meeting he's had with him. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the second meeting, the second meeting that he's had with him. And um, the meeting prior to this one, Jeremiah, he was brought before four high-ranking officials mm -hmm. who they wanted Jeremiah to be prosecuted for treason. Now, isn't that something? That's treason. Just because you don't go along to get along, they accuse you of treason. Isn't that something how they would just beat you up and you tell them what is right? If that is treason, then I definitely want to be guilty of treason this morning. But they accused him of treason because he was speaking, he was telling them to, um, to um, give up. And uh, he was speaking against what they wanted to do. That's why they called it treason. And um, it's going to come a time where some of the things we may say now, people will label you as unpatriotic. Right. You know, they got some people that want to put out a certain political parties for speaking the truth, mm -hmm. regardless of the way that the world is going. The world is going in a direction now to where everything seems to be accepted. Mm -hmm. You know, everything seems to be accepted. Right. Whether you're a man want to marry a man or a woman want to marry a woman, it's, it, they, according to the world, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone stands up and says what thus says the Lord, mm -hmm. then there will be consequences. Mm -hmm. There will be consequences. Mm -hmm. You may lose some business deals, or you may have some people who will shun you. Mm -hmm. But um, but you have to be willing to endure mm -hmm. those consequences, because you would rather get your consequences now from man than have to suffer in the devil's head. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now is the time to face the consequences. You don't want to face it after judgment. And um, so he was brought before the four high-ranking officials for treason. And just because he would not go along to get along, they wanted him punished severely. They wanted him killed, murdered, taken out. And as a result of that, he was placed in a system. 
And I guess I'm pronouncing that right. I might say it wrong, but I know what it is. It's, it's like an old well, you know, it just won't hold water no more, like yeah. it sprung a leak. But it's still moisture down in the bottom of it. So, you know, when they placed them in there, he began to sink. You know, and, and that could just imagine that's a horrible situation to be placed in. Just for telling the truth, he's placed in that situation. And he was there left to die. They placed him there for him to die. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing I like about this lesson, and there's several things I like about this lesson, but God has a way of protecting his people. Right. He has a way of protecting his people. And sometimes that protection comes from a place where you least expect it. You know, the problem we get caught up where, the problem we have today is we get too caught up trying to protect ourselves. Right. We'll jump up and tell a lie just to avoid the heat of telling the truth. You know, and that was just name you with another lie need to be told to cover up the first lie. You're gonna lose track at some point. Right, right, right. You're gonna contradict yourself. But um Jeremiah, he um kept the message the same. He was placing that sister on the left that had died. But this is not included in the lesson, but an Ethiopian who had compassion for him, an Ethiopian who was willing to stand up for injustice, just as we should today. We should have compassion. For people, you know, with all the police brutality, they put knees in people's neck, shooting people just because of what their preconceived notions they are. We should be willing to stand up and stand against that. We should be willing to stand for justice. And that's what the Ethiopian did. He stood, he had compassion for him, and he even had enough boldness. He had enough boldness that he even went before the king and uh, spoke on his behalf. Right. And Zedekiah, being the way he was, um, he was not, you know, I remember the last time I got to teach was about a month ago, and I was saying, you know, to be a, a, a strong leader, you know, and I think we all can agree a king is a leader. In order to be a strong leader, you need to have two things, you know, you need to be righteous and you need to be bold, and you need to be righteous. Zedekiah didn't have either one of those. He wasn't righteous and he definitely wasn't bold. And uh, he, he wasn't bold to stand up to the four who wanted them thrown in the system. But, um, uh, God had his hand on that situation. So um, after um, the Ethiopian went and uh, spoke on his behalf, he ordered that uh, Jeremiah be removed from the system. Mm -hmm. He did not just order, he also gave him 30 men to help him mm -hmm. be lifted up from the system. All right. and, uh, and then the, the, the men, they had the know-how and the thought process. This man has been in the mud, he's been sinking. Mm -hmm. They imagine his body is probably weak. They didn't want to damage him any more than he was, so they took old clothes and they wrapped them around the rope so they could lift him up out of it without injuring him even more. So that just goes to show you, if you're in the will of God, no matter, even if you're sinking, stay right in the will of God. He will provide a place. He will provide that 30 men. He will provide somebody who will help lift you back up if you're in the will of God. And that's exactly what happened to Jeremiah. In, uh, Jeremiah, remember we was talking about in Lamentations, he was the weeping prophet. He was a suffering prophet. Mm -hmm. And um, he did suffer, but the message remained the same. All right. All right. And in that prison is where he was at when um, King Zedekiah sent for him in today's mm -hmm. lesson. He was still in prison. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zedekiah sent for him. And that leads us into the lesson. Let me get back into my uh, Sunday school book here. All right, so consequences of giving challenging advice. All right, and our first outline is a prophet's dilemma. And the prophet this morning will be Jeremiah. He's, he's going to be in a dilemma this morning. Let, I'm going to read from the uh, New International Version. Um, verses 14 through 16 covers the first outline. Verse 14. Then King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah the prophet and had him brought to the third entrance to the temple of the Lord. I'm going to ask you something, the king said to Jeremiah. Do not hide anything from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, if I give you an answer, will you not kill me? Even if I give you counsel, would you not listen to me? But the king swore this oath secretly to Jeremiah. And surely as the Lord lives, who has given us breath, I will neither kill you nor hand you over to those who want to kill you. All right. All right, let me out. Um, um, just a second. Let me get situated. Do we have any um, okay. 
got something in the chat. Hold on. All right. Thank you. I got somebody in the chat already. Thank you. All right. All right. Before we get into this first outline, let me read this one. It says, this lesson shows us, he shows, this, the lesson for us here is about compassion. As Ibadir Melit showed compassion for Jeremiah, that's the Ethiopian I was talking about. I was trying to get out, trying to pronounce that. This morning. It, was in, it was in the chat. So we must show compassion for those who are helpless and suffer. Society is full of people who need our help. And that's true. It's full of people. We need to have compassion. Not just the injustice. There's some people that don't have enough food to eat. There's some people that got a bill that they don't have the funds to pay. And we send with money in our bank account. Some of us got more than one. We got the savings and we got the checking and maybe another checking. You know, but we have so much. We need to be willing to have compassion, right. to share it. We don't own it anyway. God just allowed us to be stewards of it. Right. None of it is ownership. So we're just stewards of it. And let's be just stewards and show compassion for those who in need, whether it be something physical or spiritual counseling or whatever they needs may be, whatever they needs may be. Um, we need to try to meet their needs, just yeah. as Jesus did. You know, he fed the hungry before he preached to them. He met the people where they are. So that's what we should do. We should have that same compassion. Thank you for that comment. Let's, let's get into our first one, the prophet's dilemma. All right, now, like I told you, King Zedekiah, he sent for Jeremiah, and he had him brought to the third entrance. You may wonder, why the third entrance? Why would it be the third entrance? Why he couldn't come in the front door? Like everybody else, why the third entrance? And the reason why the third entrance, he wanted this done in secret. Like I said, he wasn't a very bold king. He didn't even want anybody seeing him talking to him. He wanted this done in secret. He wanted it done in secret. Isn't that something? That's why I said to be a good leader, you got to be bold or righteous. He didn't have the boldness. But I tell you something that he did have, he did have some value for the word of God. He still sent for that word. He still sent for that word. And um, that worries me today about some people and about myself too. It's a lot of us, you know, we're sitting here this morning seeking the word of God. Amen. We've been studying this lesson all week. We're seeking the word of God. Amen. You know, we buy commentaries, seeking the word of God. Amen. The 10 revivals, whatever it is, seeking the word. We're seeking the word of God. And that's a good thing yeah. to seek the word of God. But are we doers of the word? Are we doers of the word? That's where we fall short. Seeking God's word is not enough. We have to apply it to our lives. And that's what King Zedekiah fell short. And, uh, you know, and uh, it was a good thing he sent for him. Even if he sent for him in secret, it was a good thing that he did send for him. He was seeking the word of God. Almost as if he was hoping God may have changed his mind or something. Maybe there's another way. Surely I don't have to surrender. You sure, you know, you can't negotiate with God's word. God's word is God's word. You know, there's no halfway point. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. So if you get too far away, then you don't want to move. Because God's word has been in the same place the entire time. All right. And then King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah the prophet and had him brought to the third entrance to the temple of the Lord. And then he said, I'm going to ask you something, said King Jeremiah. He said, do not hide anything from me. Isn't that something? Do people really mean that? You know, I just think about it. If they really meant it, then why do we behave the way that we do? Why isn't that when people tell us the truth, we get on the defense if we said the truth is what we really seek? Why is it that we um, get combative about it? Why is it that, you know, we react so harshly about it? And, um, and also in delivering the truth, you know, we have to be careful with the truth. The truth is the truth now. It needs to be told. But we have people in society today that use truth as ammunition. They don't use it to help build you up. They use it to tear you down. That's it. That's it. They use the truth to tear you down. You know, and it says in Proverbs, you know, uh, uh, soft words, you know, turn away wrath. It, it's turn away wrath. So the way that we deliver that truth is important. We need to make sure that the truth, even though it's the truth, it needs to be coming from a good place. Right. And it needs to be something help to build up, as I say, instead of to tear down. Mm -hmm. And it may seem like 
Jeremiah was speaking against King Zedekiah. It may seem like it was, but he was trying to build him up. He was trying to save his life. Right. Everything he was telling me was for his own good. Right. Right. I used to think about back in the days when I used to get the equipment and uh, you know, you get the equipment and it says for your own good. Yeah. I couldn't understand it. I don't see how that's good for me. You must don't feel the other end of that. Word. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't get it just then. And that's what that word was doing to Zedekiah this morning. It was whipping him. It was whipping him. It was whipping him. He had pumped himself up. He didn't want to give up being king. It was going to take some things away. It was whipping him. So that's why he was trying to avoid that word. This morning. This morning. This morning. All right, got another comment. That's good. All right, it says Zedekiah was weak. Yes, he was. Cowardly king. That's right. It said he was spineless. He was fickle. He was indecisive. Untrustworthy and unreliable. That's it. And it said, as such, he is a good example of the kind of person we should never be. Amen. That's it. It said, every one of us should guard against becoming like him. That's right. And we must guard against becoming cowardly, fearing people rather than God. That's right. That's right. King Zedekiah was so worried about what people going to say about him, yeah. what the women would say about him. What about the people who had already joined forces with, with um, the Chaldeans, what they would say about him. He was more worried about what people had to say than what God had to say. And uh, we know different today. We know different today. I can remember uh, was having our um, academic achievement bank. We have that after we have the Smarty Party. So it was one morning, you know, and uh, I get to work on a committee. You know, I just enjoy it. You get free t-shirt, free meal, and you get to pay. You know, I just enjoy doing it. So, you know, I'm standing on my post speaking, just, just enjoying my day. It was a beautiful day that day. The sun was shining, the birds were singing, everything was going good. You know, and I'm speaking, cutting up people coming in in the community. And then I look down the sidewalk and I see somebody. Like, that can't be who I think it is. Then I heard his voice on the phone. Well, I've got to make sure my shirt tucked in with my pastor coming down the sidewalk. I was more worried about what pastor would see me doing than yeah. what God would see me doing. Right, right. Right. Then I did. And I was straightened up. And I tell you, he come past me, we spoke. Then he stopped and talked to our SRO so long. I'm thinking, man, he's going to miss the ceremony. You know, <laughs> trying, to, trying to be straight while I'm in his presence, you know. But that lets you go to show that sometimes we're often more worried about what man thinks about it than what God thinks about it. If we could shift that focus, oh, what a better word we would be. If we could shift that focus. And uh, King Zedekiah, he failed to do that this morning. Come on. I also think Jeremiah is like a mailman. Um, yeah. You know, the mailman delivers the letters, you know, to the mail or the mail or the unwanted news. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes we'll ostracize or blame a soldier mailman and sister. Mm -hmm. You know, right. but God don't, uh, he don't punish. He's not going to punish Jeremiah mm -hmm. for what Zedekiah didn't accept. That's Jeremiah. it, that's it. So uh, that's why I just want to say that I see Jeremiah's mailman. He's delivering what God told him to do. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, being ostracized by the man, but God is not going to hold Jeremiah uh, in Contempt for what Zedekiah didn't accept. Yeah. Okay. Good, good point, good point. Any other questions or comments before we move on? Very good, thank you. Thank you, that's good, that's good. Jeremiah did his part. The problem is King Zedekiah didn't do his part. And uh, we, we face that dilemma today, I know I do. I give advice and then I know they're not gonna listen. And you, you feel responsible, maybe I didn't say it the right way. Maybe I should have did this, I should have did that. But once, Jeremiah had did what God told him to do. He had touched his mouth, put the words in his mouth. And once he told that same message, he didn't waver at all. He told that same message he had done his part. And he was protected in the end. He was protected in the end. Amen. And uh, so could have uh, King Zedekiah been protected had he done what the Lord told him to do. And so can we be protected if we do what the Lord tells us to do. You know, that's the only way we can live twice. That's the only way we can get into heaven. We have to be in the will of God and do what God tells us to do. Amen. We have to surrender, just like King Zedekiah had to do. We're going to have to surrender it all to him. And um, that's what Zedekiah fell short. Let me um, get out this first outline. Let's see. And then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, 
If I, de if I declared unto thee, would I surely not put me to death? I could see why Jeremiah asked that question. You know, left him to death one time. Mm -hmm. You know, he just changed with the wind. He said, okay, put him in there. No, nah, take him out. No, nah, put him back in jail. Nah. So I could see why he would ask that question. Mm -hmm. And then he said, if I give thee counsel, will thou not hearken unto me? So if I give it to you, you, you are you still not going to do what I tell you what to do? So why is it that you're asking for the truth that you're not going to follow? And that's a question we can ask ourselves today. Why is it we asking for the truth that we're not going to follow? Why are we seeking God's word that we're not going to follow? Why are we studying this and we're not going to follow? That's a good question. And then so Zedekiah the king swear secretly unto Jeremiah. Now you have to be careful what he's saying now. He's saying, as the Lord liveth that made us, that made this so, I will not put thee to death, neither will I give thee to the hands of the men that seek my life. And I see why he said I won't, because he gave them to them in the hands the previous time before council men. And um, he did promise him, he did promise him that uh, two things. He promised him that he won't kill him, regardless of what advice you give me. I'm not going to kill you, and I'm not even going to put you in the hands of the ones that would kill you. But he left something important now. He did not promise to take God's counsel. He did not promise to follow God's word. That's why he fell short. That's exactly why he fell short. And that's the prophet's dilemma. Any questions or comments? But you know, the, the king had to know the Lord for him to make Jeremiah that promise. You know what I'm saying? So he, he know the Lord. He know what the Lord was, was telling Jeremiah. But he just didn't want to listen. He just went along with the kill along. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you for that. Yeah, he did know the word. He valued the word. He valued the word enough to have a man pulled out of prison, mm -hmm. sneak him into the third entrance, don't let nobody see him, just to see that counsel. So he knew it was important. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was the son of Josiah, who was a righteous king, mm -hmm. who uh, followed the word. So he had, you know, I can imagine, you know, I can I didn't see it in scripture, but he had some biblical teachings. Mm -hmm. He knew who God was. He he knew that who God was, but he was just too caught up. He was caught up on what the people would say about him. Would say about him. You know, he was placed in that in that position mm -hmm. by the opposition. You know, it wasn't like the people called for him to be king to begin with. So he was so worried about protecting that. And, and that's the problem today. We don't want to give up nothing. Mm -hmm. We don't want to give nothing up. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's good. That's good. I ain't got that. Yeah, yeah. What we do? That is that. Exactly. Exactly. I know Jimmy Jerry don't know he was That's it. It was. It was very unpopular. He he did that through five different kings. Yes, sir. I, I see us in the same boat as the king did. We hear what the word, God's word, is telling us. Right. But we still refuse to turn to seek him. That's right. We still want to establish our own rights and not submit to the unrighteousness of God. That's it. And if God tells us what not to do and, 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 and lay in our, in our category, we still going to try to do what we want to do. That's but it. we got to learn how to submit ourselves unto God. We got to have a relationship with God. And whatever God says, when, when I'm reading the word and I see something and it hit my thoughts, ooh, got to do better than that now. Yeah, that's it. That's so, it. so when we see the word and, and it talks to us, we need to take heed. That's it. Don't just read it and, 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 and it don't mean as it means. A lot of folks read the Bible and when you get to a situation, them, they want to accept it. They ain't talking to me, they talking to Talking to Kelly, talking yeah. to yeah. yeah. talk to somebody other than them. But when you read the word, and, and, and it's going to come out, they're going to jump out on the page and mm -hmm. talking directly to you, just yeah. like it was to the king now. You got to hear what the word said, just like Sister Ethan said. When the man man talk the man off, don't be mad. Yeah. When, 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 when Pastor will be preaching the word of God, when the word goes forth and hit your toe, when he talk the man off, don't be mad and I speak to him and shake your hand and be That's right. That's right. That's good. Mm -hmm. So we do. When we hear the word and it falls on us, we don't we we'll move it to somebody somewhere else. But see, the word is made it's like a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. huh? So, mm -hmm. so what it do is it's gonna hit us, it's gonna whoop us, mm -hmm. trying to get us back where God wants to be. Mm -hmm. Showing all your many blessings right there with the Lord. That's right. it. 
Seek the word. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be the same. And um, because, like Zedekiah, he would have saved his life mm -hmm. if he right. had went on to the Babylonians that's and, right. and did what Jeremiah told him to do. The city would have been burned. Yeah, right. yeah, I agree with that. That's what I'm saying. We look at this, and I looked at it the same way as if he, if Jeremiah was just teaching and preaching doom. But he wasn't. He was giving them good news. He was telling them how they could be spared from the devil's hell, how they, how the city could be saved. He was telling them how his life could be saved, his family life could be saved. He was giving them good news. But all he could see, he was too shallow man. He didn't want to lose his popularity. We the same way today. The same way today. Same way today. We'll kill ourselves, work a three or four jobs just to keep the house on the hill in the shiny Cadillac in the driveway. Suffer. Don't want to give up nothing. Mm -hmm. Just don't want to give up nothing. Sacrifice and sacrifice. Very good. Thank you all for the comments. Let me check. The chat looks clear. Oh, I've got some in the chat. No, thank you. All right. All right. Got another comment. Thank you. Let's see. It says, if he had listened to Jeremiah, the things that occurred in chapter 39, verses 4 through 7. But not listening to the outcome was worse than surrendering to the Babylonians. That's it. That's it. The same with us today. If we reject God, then we suffer the fate of suffering. Very good. Very good. Very good. Because he didn't listen. Oh, my goodness. He was forced to see his, his own children killed. His own eyes was gouged out. He, ooh, he suffered. He suffered and he lost his life. That's a good question. That's it. I agree. Where you want the whooping from? I definitely take it from man any day. And Jeremiah, he had that figured out. That's why, okay, you want me, I'll go right back in prison. You want me to come out? I'll come back out. You put him in the system, he started to sink. He, God sent somebody to lift him back up out of there. The same king who ordered him in there ordered him right back out. And so, um, Jeremiah had that figure out. Poor, Zing, poor King Zedekiah didn't have it figured out. We have people today who still don't have that figured out. That's good. That's right. He said the word over and over and over. We still ain't heard it. Still. Mm -hmm. Still ain't heard mm -hmm. Over and over. What time is it? I want my brother and I preaching the same sermon. We had a gap. Yeah, that's it. I guess we had a gap. What are you talking about? We had a gap. So it all kept. We're trying to refer to but to get in our heart, mm -hmm. we got to repent from our sins and fall after God's will, not our will. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very good. Very good. And God is so good. Look at all the chances he gave Zedekiah to save that city. Chances he didn't deserve. He kept giving him chance after chance. And uh, he did adhere to the advice. Let's look at our second uh, prophet advice. Um, I'll be reading from the New International Version. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, This is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says. If you surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, your life will be spared, and this city will not be burned down. You and your family will live. But if you will not surrender, the officers of the king of Babylon this city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians, and they will burn it down. You yourself will not escape from them. All right, just two verses in this outline. But it says a lot in this outline. That lets us know, y'all, we're not on an island. You know, if some people do what they want to do, and they figure, I do what I want to do, I ain't hurt nobody else. But that's not the case. That's not the case. If you're doing wrong, your loved ones are suffering too. It hurts them to see you go through the consequences of your wrongdoing. So you're not on an island. Now he was in a situation, King Zedekiah, to where he could have not only saved himself, he could have saved the whole city. He could have saved his family. But he was too worried about his image and what folks thought about him and what they would say that um, he made the wrong decision. He made the wrong decision. But um, 
Let's look through this again. Then said, then, then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, if you surrender, if you will, only willing to surrender, the officers of Babylon will spare your life. This city will not be burned down and your family will live. Mm -hmm. And he was almost as if, if he can't be king of the city, then just burn it down. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people like that today. They'll just tear it up yeah. rather than see somebody else with it. Yeah. That's right. So, um, but uh, he was selfish. He was selfish. He was so caught up on self. He was so caught up on self that he wasn't willing to give up just a little bit just to gain so much. So much would be spared. All right, but if you will not surrender to the officers, the king of Babylon, the city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians, and they will burn it down. You yourself will not be escaped from it. So the city was going to the Babylonians one way or the other. One way or the other. And he chose the other, unfortunately. It wasn't good for him. And if you'll notice, even though this was the third time, the message still mm -hmm. remained the same. Uh -huh. Any questions or comments before we move into our final outline? Okay, our final outline, a leader's father. A leader's father. All right. <clears throat> I'll be reading from the New International Version. Now, King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have gone over to Babylonia. For the Babylonians may hand me over to them and they will mistreat me. And they will not hand you over, Jeremiah replied. Obey the Lord by doing what I tell you. Then I will go well with you and your life will be spared. Right. But if you refuse to surrender, that is what the Lord has revealed to me. All the women left in the palace of the king of Judah will be brought out to the officials of the king of Babylon. These women will have, will say to you, they misled you and overcame you. Those trusted friends of yours, your feet are sunk in the mud. Your friends have deserted you. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to that 19th verse. We'll go back to the Let's go back to that uh, 19th verse. Uh, King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I'm afraid of the Jews. And that song, I told you, so worried about what man, just like say, where would you rather get that weapon from? He was so afraid of the man who have, of, of men. He was afraid of the ones who had gone over to the Babylonians, for the Babylonians may hand me over to them and they will mistreat you. He worried about being mistreated. His life is on the line. It's, it's almost as if he um, in denial. You know, we're in denial today. Mm -hmm. Some of us are constantly doing wrong, but yet we got our chest puffed out. We, you know, we talk, walk around as if we got life figured out. Mm -hmm. It's almost if he was in denial. He's worried about being mistreated. Mm -hmm. What about being killed? Right. What about having your eyes gouged out, witnessing your family being killed, the city being burned down? Mm -hmm. And he's worried about being mistreated. Right. And then they went. And then he told them they will not. He, he's telling them they will not hand you over. Jeremiah replied, mm -hmm. "Obey the Lord by doing what I tell you." Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. A lot of us get caught up on the messenger. Mm -hmm. Now Jeremiah was delivering the message, mm -hmm. but it wasn't Jeremiah's message. Right. That was God's message to um, King Zedekiah. Right. So he was telling them what says the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I can see if you got to hang up with uh, a certain person, that should not affect. Because the words are coming from the God. The words are coming from God. So the words, those are God's words he's delivered. That's why I put it that way. So he, he's hung up on um, it being Jeremiah that he's talking to. Then he said, uh, they will not let you go and your life will be spared. He's telling him the same message. The message still haven't changed. If you surrender, you will be spared. But he's like, but what about this? And what, what that won't happen? Then what this won't happen? Like I said, I make you feel like how many times I got to tell you? Right. The message is still the same. Right. Just like you said, uh, make have to hear the same sermon over and over again. The message doesn't change. 
Sometimes it takes a while. Our hearts are not tender. It takes a little bit more to prick it sometimes. Mm -hmm. right. So the message was still the same. He's still telling him, your life will be spared. Mm -hmm. But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. He's reminding him, this is coming from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then he goes into details about the women, you know, they'll be given over to the Babylonians mm -hmm. and have their way with them. And he could avoid all of this if he's willing, only willing to surrender. Mm -hmm. If you're only willing to surrender. And it's a lot that we could avoid if we would only be willing to surrender. You know, it's some hardship that we go through because we did not listen. Mm -hmm. We still, we try to have our own righteousness. We kind of figure out, well, we're going to negotiate. Well, I ain't going to just do all the way wrong. I'm just going to do I ain't gonna do that. I just gonna do this right here. Wrong is wrong. Half the lies, half the truth is a whole lie. You got to go all the way in. You either all the way in or you all the way out. You can't straddle the fence on right and wrong. Either one side or the other. There's no gray area. The gray area is still the wrong area. So uh, that's what King Zedekiah failed to do. He needed to surrender. A lot of it could have been spared. A lot of the hardships and the trouble we go through to today could be spared. And let us be reminded that uh, our own actions affect more than just us. Mm -hmm. It affects more than that just us. Uh, I remember when Sister Jackson was teaching one time, she was saying how the group of kids would play together and you better stop doing that or we'll be in trouble. Yeah. You know, it's some things that this country and this world, we need to stop doing before we'll be in trouble. Right. So we have to not only do right for ourselves, but for the entire good of God. And we're, that's what we're trying to do, strengthening our walk with God. Do you have any other questions or comments? Oh, uh, Brother Jonathan, could you do the offering? Do you have any more questions? Oh, here we go. Good, we got some uh, comments right here. All right, it says some people Uh, I said some people might need a prophet like Jeremiah today to tell us what we are doing wrong. The fact is, we already have what is needed. We have God's word in the form of the Holy Bible and Christ-centered churches to help us study it. We have the Holy Spirit who dwells in all believers to guide us. We have unlimited hope for the future through Christ's new, the new covenant. I'll just start off and say, some people might say we need a prophet like Jeremiah today to tell us what we are doing wrong. The fact is we already have what is needed. We have God's word in the form of the Holy Bible and, and Christ-centered churches to help us study. We have the Holy Spirit who indwells, who dwells within us, all believers to guide us. We have unlimited hope for our future through the new covenant brought with the blood of Jesus the Christ. Thank you for that comment. I thank you for that comment. I thank everybody for their comments. I thank y'all for helping me get through this lesson. I thank you for joining in on this discussion. Um, the consequences. I tell you, I had a long title this, this week. I couldn't even memorize it. The consequences of giving challenging advice. We need to be like Jeremiah, be willing to suffer whatever consequences there there are, because just like our Sister Norma said, you'd rather take that whooping from man or from God. And uh, me, myself, I would rather take it from man. Yeah. Any more questions or comments before we close out? If not, I'd like to close us out in prayer. Okay. Father God, this morning, how we do love you, Father God. We thank you for helping us with this discussion this morning, Father God. We pray that it was what you would have it to be, Father God. Father God, we ask that you go with us throughout the rest of this week, Father God. Mm -hmm. Father God, strengthen us where we're weak and build us up where we're torn down, Father yeah. God. 
Help us to better and be better studiers of your word, Father God. Help us to not only be studiers of your word, but be doers of your word, Father God. Help strengthen our relationship with you, Father God. We ask that you uh, be with the pastor today, Father God, as he bring forth your word, Father God. We ask that you give him preaching power, Father God. We ask that his word prick our hearts, Father God. And we ask that we allow the word to convict us and make us better soldiers in your Christian army. We ask, we want to thank you for the offering this morning, Father God. It's our prayer that it be used just what you would have it to be, Father God. And help us grow our Sunday school, Father God. Father God, we know through you it's, it's the solution to all our problems, Father God. Father God, we're praying for restoration this morning, Father God. We're praying for you to restore the students back, Father God. We're praying for you to restore the teachers back, Father God. Restore us in every which way we need, Father God. We're leaning on you. Father God, we're going to turn to you from, from, from where our help coming from. Yeah. We ask all these blessings in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.